Fantastic. All right. Ooh. Jesus. Oh, for the love of good, good morning, Mrs. Peterson there. How how you doing? I'm just going to grab this box here and yeah. Uh, have a have a have a good morning there, Mrs. Peterson. Oh, jeez. The love of everything. Toast Ooh, 21 pounds of snakes. So guys, I have been looking forward to this package for a long time. And so a little backstory. A couple of years ago, I went back to school to get another degree. Graduated summa cum laude, thank you very much. And while I was in school, I drastically reduced my snake collection to pay for tuition and books and, you know, keep the roof over my head and all that good stuff. But anyway, now that I've graduated, I'm building up the collection again in a big way. All right, here we go. Good to know. So this shipment came from Mike Hernandez out in California. He writes, hello Dave, thank you for your business and I wish you the best of luck in this acquisition. Feel free to contact me with any questions, Mike. All right, here we go. You ready? Is that what I think it is? Mm -hmm. Somebody had a little accident in here. Check this out, guys. This is a huge female pied. It's a low white pied, but man, she is beautiful. So, you know, some people like high white pieds, some people like low white pieds. I like both, actually. If it's pied, I like it. All right, because her bag is completely soiled, I'm gonna go set her up in the quarantine room right now. I'll be right back, don't go away. All right, guys, so she's all set up in the quarantine room. I'm going back in for this one. All right, check this out, guys. This is a big female pastel head pied. So I've got a pastel inchy pied male coming pretty soon, and he's gonna have a date with this pastel head pied girl. And what that's gonna make is that's gonna make super pastel inchy pieds. I'm really kicking up the pied program over here. All right, guys, snake number three, here we go. And it is another pied. <laughs> This one's a little different than just a normal pie. It could be normal, but we think that it could be a yellow belly pie, which is also called a pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna have to breed her to prove out that she has yellow belly in her and that she is in fact a pumpkin pie. So it could be just a really good looking normal pie, or I could hit the jackpot and this could be a yellow belly or pumpkin pie. Either way, she is absolutely beautiful. Right, guys, so here's snake number four of four. So, so far, we have what could be a pumpkin pied, we have a pied, and we have a pastel het pied. These are all adult females that are going right into my breeding program. This one, this one could be amazingly awesome. Holy crap, guys. Oh, this is why this box was so heavy. This is a 3,500 gram adult female het pied. Mike told me she laid 14 eggs for him last season. So that pastel inchy pied that I have may go on this one. The banana pied that I have may go on this one. The, there's endless possibilities with these kinds of snakes, especially when you have one this enormous. Look at this girl. There is endless potential with normal het pieds, especially huge girls like this. Look at her. Oh, she is just big and healthy and beautiful. And look at how robust she is for having just laid 14 eggs just a couple of months ago. This is an enormous ball python. Oh, she is absolutely amazing. Just look at her. This is now the biggest ball python that I have in my family, for sure. And again, She's gonna have a date with maybe an orange dream head pie, but I don't like to do head pie to head pie because yeah, you could hit what you're looking for, but then you have a bunch of 66% head babies out there. And if you sell those to the wrong person, they're not gonna label them as 66% head something. They're just gonna label them as normals. And then somebody down the line is going to breed those, prove them out, not know that they were het. And all of a sudden you've got somebody out there saying, hey, I just produced my own line of pies. Well, no you didn't. You bought a snake that wasn't labeled. So I really don't like to do 66% hets, but 
she will go with something and I just haven't figured that out yet but I knew that I wanted her and I knew that I needed a snake this size a 14 egg layer I knew that I needed a snake this size in my family and she's home oh this is absolutely wonderful Mike thank you so much for this shipment I absolutely love these guys I mean, Kudos to you for using a recycled box. So many people are hung up on, well, I want a brand new box. And then these boxes that are perfectly good just sit around. So I actually prefer my snakes in a sturdy, recycled box. We don't need to create new stuff. We can recycle everything. And snake shipment boxes are no exception. All right, so I'm gonna get these guys set up in the quarantine room. They're gonna be in quarantine for a while and I'll explain why in just a little bit, but I could not be happier with these snakes. My family is growing again and it just is awesome. Next year, it's gonna be Pied City around here. All right, girly, come with me. Woo, God, you're beautiful. So I have all of these snakes set up in this quarantine room. I have a rack in a separate room that is especially for quarantining animals that come in. And the reason why you want to quarantine your animals is everybody thinks that, well, there's got to be something that the animal is carrying, whether it be mites or whether it be a respiratory infection or something worse. And yeah, that's a lot of why you really want to get in the practice of quarantining your animals. But the other side of the coin is, these guys just lived their entire life in California. The barometric pressure is different out there. The temperatures are different. The natural humidity is different in Northern California than it is in Minnesota. Not a lot different, but certainly the barometric pressures that these snakes are used to, they're not gonna get that here. So quarantining is a way for the snakes to be just left on their own for a while, making sure that they're eating naturally, taking big dumps naturally, and just is an all around healthy snake. So guys, I just wanna talk just a little bit about how to have success with your breeding program. I've talked to so many people with filming for the Reptile Channel, filming for this channel, who have told me that they've gone out and they've gotten bank loans for $20,000 or more. They've put mortgages on their house just to buy breeding stock. And I gotta cringe every time somebody tells me that because I know that the chances of them actually recouping that money is going to be a very lengthy process. And the amount of interest that they're paying on those loans and the putting their houses in jeopardy by taking out second mortgages, it makes me cringe because breeding ball pythons has never, or snakes for that matter, has never been a get rich quick scheme. The second thing that I wanna talk about is how to be successful breeding ball pythons when really it seems like everybody is breeding ball pythons. And here's how to do it. Pick a gene. Take John and Tiffany Daig at JD Constriction. They work exclusively with Azanthix and they're known for Azanthix. Pick a gene to work with and get known for it. Pick your favorite gene. And in my case, I'm working exclusively with pods now. I used to do clowns and I used to do banana morphs and I used to do spider morphs and pinstripe morphs way back in the day. But now that I'm rebuilding the family here, I am really starting to focus on one specific gene. And the pie gene is what actually made me fall in love with ball pythons. The other thing is, and this goes back to what I was talking about before, don't spend more money than you have. Don't take out a second mortgage to buy breeding stock. Don't go and get yourself in massive credit card debt to build the stock. I've been breeding ball pythons for X number of years. I have no idea how long, but a long time. And I've slowly began at the bottom like everybody else and started breeding and taking that money and recycling it back into the family and then breeding those animals and recycling that money. So these four snakes that I just got, it all was paid for with one clutch. I took the sale of all those pides that we saw in the egg cutting video and I sold them, except for these two banana pides, and then recycled that money into future breeding stock. I'm not in debt. I don't owe anybody any money for anything. 
and that's the way to do it. But balance your budget every year though. Have a portion of your sales go to buy future breeders, but also save some of that for feeders. There's always gonna be vet bills that come up. You want a pool of money from your sales to go into that. Don't go gung-ho and just buy new snakes. And part of the money that I use for my sales goes into equipping this place with a remote control, motion detecting, camera uh, surveillance. So. Really, by the time anybody gets into this back room, if they do happen to break in here, the police are gonna be notified by the time they even get into this room. Anyway, enough on that. Pides are where it's gonna be at for me, so all of these are all future breeders. So I have Orange Dream Het Pides over there, I have Banana Pides over there. Most of these are all adult female uh, Pides. So next year, like I said, it's gonna be Pied City around here. So. I couldn't be more excited for the future and what's coming out of my family here. So anyway, guys, I have got to go. I have got to start packing. We are going to spend a couple of days touring the Badlands and the Black Hills of South Dakota. There are so many cool herps out there and roaming bison and wild horses. It is just magical out there and I love going out there. So I'm going to take you guys with me. And until then, love the planet, keep your life in balance and rattle on.